Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to play around with micro array data in GEO database, show you how to retrieve the gene expression data from GEO and then to showcase the R script for differential express analysis of the data. First, let's have a brief idea of the database we use today. The gene expression omnibus is a data repository hosted by National Center for Biotechnology Information, NCBI. NCBI contains all the publicly available nucleotide and protein sequences, and the NCBI GEO is intended to host different types of expression data, which include all array-based applications and some high-throughput sequencing data, covering all types of sequencing data in both raw and processed format. These databases are directly submitted from the original authors, which will ensure they are record to make the data publicly available or do so as part of the publication process. Many journals require accession numbers for micro area or sequence data before acceptance of the paper for publication. With the accession number, the reviewer and editor may access the data during the review process. So first, let's have a quick tour of GEO today. We only want to focus on area type of data. So microarray data is considered the most common sequencing data set in NGBI GEO. Generally, we just need to understand three things for any type of data analysis. What kind of info is stored in microarray data? What are the files? How is the file format and the structure? How is the file store in NGBI. From there, we will know what information is needed and where to find them, and then how to put them together. Secondly, what kind of analysis do we want to perform? The objective to conduct microarray assay is normally quite straightforward. People do microarray tests to compare the differences in gene expression level between at least two groups of samples to know what genes are up or down regulated in certain treatments or conditions. So thirdly, after we know clearly about our data set and also have an idea of what analysis we want to carry on, now we need to know how to retrieve the required data for our analysis. For example, to do the differential expression analysis, we need the expression data gene annotation data which is about the gene name and the metadata regarding the sample group or the sample phenotype condition. So in this video, I'm gonna analyze this series file GSD 6377. Um, it is a micro area data. It contains the data of the prostate cancer cell LNCAP cells which also undergo the treatment um, and for 16 hours with the Kappa G tassel, Dr. tassel, or just control group. So you may read the detail of the experiment in this overall design um, section or for understanding it's always good if let's say we read the original paper that always link in this edition but, but in this file, um, in this series, they actually is missing. Okay, so now go to the R script. Okay, the R script that I'm going to use is referring to Mark Banding from Shelfer Biotechnology Core Facility. I put the tutorial link in the section below. You may try your own running the script and learn more from there. First, let's start the working directory. So the GEO query package allows us to access um, the data from GEO, depending on your niche, you can download only the process data and meta data provided from the report register. In some cases, you may want to download the raw data as well, if it was provided by the report register. The function to download a GEO database is get GEO from the GEO query package. This script are meant for us to check the structure, take a sneak peek at out the data store in rows and columns. We can check how many platforms used for the GESD data. Usually there will only be one platform. When we get that, we want only the first object in the list. The GES is now a, a, an expression set. So you can see that um, the, it contains essay data, 
um, visual data, phenotype data. We can also have a look um, at the sample information, gene annotation, and the expression data. So from here, you can scroll and see what are the, uh, the things that in within in the rows and the column of, of all this information. So this allows us to have a rough idea of how is the information stored in this expression chart. And now we can proceed to um to check if the data is ready to be used. From here we can see that um this data were processed with um the software and have been RMN normalized filter to remove low expressing genes. RML stands for robust multi-area average and it is the most common method to determine for top set expression level for affirmatory area. So the summary function can then be used to print the distribution of the expression level. If the data has been locked transformed, typically they are within the range of 0 to 16. Hmm. However, the values are quite big here and go beyond 16. So it is quite weird because the data should be already locked to transform by IMA. But well, just let's do it on our own and move on to the next step. For more careful um, analysis, we can try to run the raw data of the this data set again by applying it. RMA normalization on our own to see if anything different from the from the data. Okay, so we try to just log transform to check the expression again and we can see they're all within 0 to 16. And draw a box plot. We can see that this distribution of each sample are evenly um, distributed, which means that the data has been normalized. Now we try to have a look in the P data for the element that we need for the analysis. So we want to know the sample name, whether it is treatment or control group. Look like the information is in that column of the characteristic CH1.1. Um, okay, we can use the select function to subject the column of interest. Okay, now we can have a look. Uh, of the information now and next I want to make a column of simplified group names for each sample. Screen R is helpful. First of all let's create a column name group and first and then use the function str detect to detect the presence of particular string or word and fill the new column accordingly. I need two new columns actually. So the first one is the group and the second one is the serum group to, to group the serum into uh, that string or the full serum. This script is given by Brandon Yor. So thanks Brandon. This is totally depends on your own data set to make this necessary grouping in the new columns. Just modify this command here for your data set of interest. Okay, have a look of the sample info. So we have a group and serum. After that, we can visualize the correlations between the samples by hierarchical clustering. Uh, the function call can calculate the correlation on the scale of 0 to 1 in a pairwise fraction between all samples, then visualize on a heat map. There are many ways to correct create heat map. So here I use P heat map. The only argument it requires um, is a metric of numeric value and we have it. Okay. We also can try to add more sample info onto the plot to get a better picture of the group and clustering. Here we make use of the sample info file that was created earlier. And we have to make sure that the row name is having the same order with the core name of core metric. So from here, we can see that they are actually the same yeah, path. If not, then you, as you have to force the row name to match the column by this script. Okay, let's try to run the script again. And now we can see the heat map have having more information. Another way is to use PGM, principal component analysis. It has to note that the data have to be transposed so that the gene list is in the column. 
while the role names are the stamper, so PCR process, PCR process would not run out of the memory in the other way round. So um, we also can add label to plot the result. Here we use the GG plot two package, while the GG repel package is used to position the text labels more cleverly so that they can be read. Here we can see that the sample are divided into uh, two groups uh, based on the serum serum treatment type. And the next section here um, is the differential expression analysis. In this section, we use the LIMA package to perform differential expression analysis. LIMA stands for Linear Models for Micro Area. Here we need to tell LIMA what sample that we are going to use. Uh, and we are what temper group that we want to compare. So I choose temper in four group um, to to compare them. And here I create a design matrix. There was a matrix of zero and one, one row for each temper and one column for each uh, each temper group. So like this, we can then rename the column name so that it is easier to see. So I rename in this. Uh, the following name and now let's check if the expression data contain any low expression genes because this will affect the quality of uh, differential expression analysis a big problem in doing statistical analysis like lima is the influence of type 1 statistical errors also called false positive one simple way to to reduce the possibility of type 1 error is to do fewer comparisons by filtering the data. For example, we know that not all the genes are expressed in all tissue and many genes will not be expressed in any sample. As a result, in the differential expression analysis, it makes sense to remove those genes that are likely not expressed at all. It is quite subjective how one defines a gene being expressed. Here, I follow the tutorial to make the cutoff at the median of the expression value, which means to consider around 50% of the genes will not be expressed. I will keep those expressed genes if they are in more than 3 number. Okay, in 3. Um, okay, now we can check how many genes are removed. And we can see that around half of the genes are not qualified as expressed genes here, which makes sense because our cutoff is the median value. Okay, we continue. Here, there's also a little extra step to find out the outlier. They have to be done carefully so that the filter data won't be too biased. We calculate the width to define the variability of each sample. The area width. Um, function will assign a score to each sample with a value of 1 implying equal weak. Samples with score less than 1 are down weak or else up weak. Yeah, so anyway, I'm not going to remove any group uh, of samples here. And let's continue. Now we have a design metric and remove those low expressing genes and the outlier. We can now estimate the coefficient. For this design, we will essentially average the replicate area for each sample level. In addition, we will calculate standard deviation for each gene and average intensity for the genes across all micro area. Now we are ready to tell Lima which pairwise constructs that we want to make. For this experiment, we are going to construct gene treatment and control in each serum type. So there are four, um, four group in particular: uh, control versus uh, dorsal tussle, uh, carpatic tussle with dorsal control, yeah, F. And finally, it's time to do the statistical comparisons. Lima used Bayesian statistic to minimize type 1 error. The details are beyond the scope of this video, but essentially Lima borrowed information across all genes to perform a modified t-test. The e Bayes, um function performed the test. We are now going to summarize the result of the statistical, uh, statistical test with two additional functions. Top table will adjust the p-values and return the top genes that meet the cutoff that you supply as argument. 
So we have four groups here. So that's why I will assign them into four top tables. And then the side test will make call for the usage by adjusting the p-value and applying a log fold change cutoff similar to top table. Okay. Now with the differential express gene tables, there are some downstream analysis that you may continue, um, such as to export a full table of the differential express gene, or to generate a heat map for your selected genes, or get a gene list for a particular pathway, or do the survival analysis. Here I just want to look for the full change information of a selected gene, whether it is significantly differential express or not. So. I want to know the gene name associated with the gene ID. This associates the annotation data can be retrieved with the F data function. Okay, so here having some of the information there. Let's select um, the ID and GB uh, ACC, the gene bank extraction ID. Okay, now we try to add this NO column into the uh, fit to uh, table there and we have have a look here you can see that the two column already add into the top table okay and now I want to have a better uh, visualization of the DEG so the volcano plot function is a common way to visualizing it and here and we can see that the x axis show the log flow change and the y axis is some of the measure of statistical statistical significance which in this case um, is the log odds or b statistic we can also change the color of this gene um, with the cut off uh, and p, p value cut off and flow change cut off also we can see that those with green blue color are the, um, are the significant genes while the red color are not really significant difference okay so how about go to get the uh the genes that i want to know okay now i try to get the full table result uh the top table result for the other for the other four groups also and I want to know the gene name called NKF 3.1 um, There's the only thing that to check is the gene bank extraction So I know that the gene bank extraction number ID for this gene is like this two um, But this uh, 011, 011 is not present in this database I have checked but you also can try here uh, so that's why I only refer to the, the later one, the later ID here, 006167. Okay, so for the uh, first group, that is the social tactile versus control uh, in the textron uh, serum type, um, the expression value um, of the NKS 3.1 down regulated and kind of like significant in terms of p value. Um, yeah. And that's how you know it uh, from looking at um, the table and here. Okay, so I think at this point, we are quite clear about the data structure of USD data. It has the expression data, experiment data, um, and the, also the annotation data. And we also have learned how to check the expression data and how to abnormalize them, remove low express genes and outlier, and perform differential expression analysis using LIMA. And some of the also we, we learn how to uh, visualize the data by using ggplot2 um, to get the volcano plot, PCA data, and heat map. And that's all for today's walkthrough and explanation. I hope you learned something new from this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.